there are good union people and there are bad union people. Uh, there are good employers and there are bad employers. You can contact the Department of Labor and explain what the, what the problem is and th they may conduct an election uh, or an inspection. Well, I tell you, I tell you the truth. Or, there's one more thing. My only other experience... I guess he's gone. So that I think uh, he was yelling too loud. Uh, let me ex explain the other thing that Charlie can do with people in the same situation. You can also uh, find a lawyer that will take your case, and there's an obligation of fair representation. If they're not representing him fairly and everybody else fairly and equally, then there would be a you could file a lawsuit uh, against the union. There may be an arbitration provision in his uh, uh, union, but I don't know that. So there are lots of things you can do. What you can't do is yell at us and spit at us on TV. But well, that's for sure. I, I, I hear Charlie's frustration. You know, this is not a new problem. You, you know, remember the movie on the waterfront? It was a. Anyway, it, it's hey, not Marla. a. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, and it was Charlie too. Um, it's not a new problem. It's an old problem, but it doesn't mean that it's not a resolvable pro problem. It may be resolved, but. Just expressing anger doesn't do it. Well, one one to, has to be you know, smart and and have the right people helping. Yeah, but if I was if I was you know in a in a union situation, and and I've represented lots of union people. I know, in the I union know you have. And uh, there was a discriminatory practice of signing jobs. Then I mean you have to do something about that. Oh, of course, absolutely. Well, you know you can you know there, there's also elections where you can replace uh, people, but it needs to be looked into. So. You know, those are things that Charlie can do fairly easily. If he needs to find a lawyer, he can call LA County Bar Association and, yeah. and talk to the referral service for a, uh, a labor lawyer. But, but on the other hand, that, that's very true, and, and this is not mutually exclusive by any means, but he should be talking to the federal government, to the uh, labor, yeah, labor they, they department. They may or may not do anything about it. You just never know. Uh, should make the call. But uh, somebody should do something about it if yes. it's correct. So let me ask you this question. I'm a car rental company. I'm Avis. I'm Hertz. I'm Dollar. I'm any one of them. And you, Ralph Salzman, come in and rent a car from me. Okay. And um, you have three prior drunk driving convictions. Uh, I don't like this story. Am I obligated as a uh, owner of a car rental agency to run you through a computer to see whether or not you are. You should be driving this car since you've had three prior. Um, I uh, convictions. Don't, well, I'm not sure. Or what five, you, or four, or two. I'm not sure, and I'm not. I, firstly, I should be in jail. Uh, secondly, well, you were, bef and then they and let now you I'm out, out. Finally, they let you out to do the show. <laughs> and then I got to go back in the, in the afternoon, late afternoon. Um, I don't. I'm not sure what you mean by the word obligated. But I, well, do I, I don't know of any statutory obligation, state or federal, that requires a, 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 well, a, well, a car leasing company to, to uh, run that kind of uh, number. But I can tell you this, they don't. Well, some places do. Some states N do. Uh, not in California. Well, in California. Not in California and the other have, states that I go to. We have a pellet case recently that said car rental companies do not have a duty to perform electronic driver's license check to determine renters' previous convictions for driving under the influence. They don't have an obligation. Right. So um, uh, you, you maybe would think... There's a, maybe there's a better question. You, should they? Yeah, you would think they should. Uh, assuming it's, it's uh, uh, ascertainable, assuming they can get it through the DMV, assuming it's online, you would think that, that, that as owner of a car... Uh, I mean, I as an owner of a car, uh, if I think you're drunk or I know you're drunk or you've had a bunch of problems, mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't loan you the car. No, you shouldn't. And and I may be obligated for that. What's it different for a car rental agency? Well, you know, when you're about to loan me the car, you know that I'm intoxicated with, with what you just said. And I would think that um, the car leasing agent at, across the counter um, should should decline to give you the car if you show up to the counter while you're intoxicated. They are more interested in when you go to rent a car <laughs> as to whether or not you have a reservation, That's what true. color car do you want. Right. Do you want an upgrade? Yeah, do you have a credit card? Do you want an upgrade? ID, Can I see your driver's license? ID? Yeah. You know, Will there be, uh, are you going to have more than one driver in this car? Yeah. And, you know, do you want the extra insurance? You right. Know, there's not a lot of checking out. And, really it. important, 
Are you going to fill up the gas now yeah. or when you bring the car back? So you, know, you would think that, uh, that assu assuming the assembly and Senate in California and whoever will be governor and there'll be a, a new governor uh, would, would pass legislation to, make, to require them to do that. I mean, if you, uh, you want to have safe drivers on the road, yeah. uh, I don't know why. Uh, Does this in impact interstate commerce? Oh, I don't know. If it impacts interstate commerce, it's conceivable that it would not, that, that the states, the individual states couldn't enact that legislation. It would have to be federal. Well, I would say only drive the car in California, so I don't have the problem. Well, I don't know about that. If, if but I think it's an interesting that, problem. I, I, I think so, too. I sort of went, wow, this is. I think so, too. And, and uh, I do lease a car from time to time in more than one state. And I can tell you that nobody ever asks for a driving record. Nobody, ever, under any circumstances. Not that that would be a problem for me, but, yeah, but I, you you lease in all the rich states. <laughs> I mean, you go to they're all rich states. This, is the, all this is the United States. No, they're all rich this states. This California is not a rich state. It's a wonderful place to be. It's I've a great leased, state, but I've leased but we I've have leased a car here too. Well, away. that's that's another problem for another day, or maybe it's today. I don't know. And speaking of uh, drunk drivers, you know the. Um, Mr. Gallo's going to jail. He's not been sentenced yet. Mr. This Gallo? Is the, Mr. Gallo. This is the... Um, the Gallo one guy? Uh, no, not that I know. It. I, I don't know that there's any relation at all. But uh, Tom, uh, Andrew Thomas Gallo, he's, 20, he's 23 years of age. And uh, a year ago, he killed um, Nick Adenhart, a wonderful, who just won his first Major League Baseball game. He just that, that, that evening won his first Major League baseball game he injured uh, another individual and he, and he killed uh, you know he killed people Tragedy. in that car so he's going to get between 51 years and life in uh, in prison well the jury found him guilty of uh, murder murder yep um, and, and, and and I don't uh, I don't know why car rental agencies based on what you're just telling me if if the driver had gone into the car rental agency and uh, and mr. Gallo had three or four uh, drunk driving convictions, yeah, yeah. if they were required to check it out, they wouldn't rent him a car. Now, he's probably driving his own car there. but I believe he was driving his own car, and I don't think this was his first uh, DUI kind of problem. So l let's go from, uh, I guess, one tragedy to another tragedy. The, the, uh, I was in department, uh, uh, the second floor of the civil courthouse in downtown LA, where, yep. where the McCord divorce is oh, going yeah, on. yeah, that's right. I don't know what was happening or not today. I think they were maybe behind... Final argument today. Or were they behind closed doors trying to... I believe that at some point, and maybe maybe even right now, they were just... They should be just finishing okay. up the so final you're, argument. So you're the lawyer for uh, both of them, the husband and the, and the, and the wife. Not today, I'm not. This is a, these are the people that own the Dodgers. Yes. And uh, uh, you represent both of them. Is that an inherent conflict to start with? In it's, their it's, it's not an inherent conflict, but it certainly can turn into a conflict, and it did in this case. Well. I mean, any, many, many people have one lawyer when they're drawing up prenuptial agreements and similar documents when they are in the process of getting married. They are on the same page. Everybody's in agreement. Everybody's happy. Um, and then a lot of divorces, well, I mean, a lot of marriages end in divorce. In, inherent, when you're dry, dividing up millions of dollars, it seems, Bad to, idea. Me, seems to me it's an inherent conflict. Uh, so what does a lawyer do besides that? He uh, drafts up to their agreement uh, the contract and has it signed by both the parties. And notarized. And notarized. And then he discovers he made a mistake in the document. He used the word exclusive instead of inclusive and then they make up he, he changes the documents he changes from exclusive to inclusive and brings them back in doesn't tell them that uh, he's made any changes has them sign three more documents uh, with a change and so now we have in one set of documents uh, exclusive M McCord <laughs> uh, the Dodger person man gets the Dodgers and in the other set of documents she has interest in uh, the right, team. Right, it's community property. So I wonder what, whoever loses this case, if there's a loser, I'm sure this will be one of the biggest malpractice cases uh, that we've ever seen in California. Uh, well, the question the LA Times poses is how can there be a valid agreement if there are two versions of it? One that says the Dodgers are his and his alone, and another that says Frank and Jamie share ownership. So how, 
How could it be 